All right. So the way this class is going to go is that we are going to um, first take a quiz today. Okay. So there should be a quiz online, and your password and the password to that quiz is one four one. Okay. So uh, once after this quiz, I'm going to start putting on like restrictions, like the quiz is only is only open until this amount of time. So basically, if you miss the opportunity to take the quiz, you'll have to come and see me. Um, so the other, then what we're going to do is that we're going to do, uh, and I know I haven't signed this, uh, put this up yet. I haven't connected everything yet. But get working on the quiz. The password is 141. But after that, we're going to get, uh, since, you know, we've got a lot of tired minds here from the Super Bowl, I figure that two tired minds working together are be is better than one tired mind. So we're going to learn about paired programming today. And the way you work together as a team when you do programming. Because there is a right way to do it and there's a wrong way to do it. And paired programming is one of the wrong, right ways. Okay. And this is no good because I don't have a VGA cable. So, all right, request help. This room is <laughs> terrible. Okay, so the quiz password is 141. Please take it. It's the four quiz, and notice you'll have two. You have a second. Oh. Notice you have a second uh, assignment. All right. So I'm going to pause here. All right. So what we're going to be doing today is paired programming. Now, when I uh, now you're going to be using uh, basically that means that we're going to get two people on one keyboard. And it's now, mind you, when people go about paired programming and first first hear about it, they might think about something along these lines. And let's see if I can't plug these in and see what we get. Way. I'm getting hacked. Of course. No, no, this is Sorry. Oops. Let me try that again. Well, isolate the node. Did it? There's no volume. Can you not vo mute the volume in here? And dump them on the it's not. The I tried. It's moving too fast. Oh, this is not good. We use my connection to the database separate. I can't. To the point attack. He or she is only going after my sheet. It's not possible. The DOD level of encryption would take months to get good. So two people on the same keyboard. That's not how this works, by the way. When I say pair programming, I'm I, you, instead what happens is that basically only one person has control of the keyboard. Okay, one person and one person alone controls the keyboard. Uh, the key here is that you're going to switch off, um, you know, fairly frequently, whenever you want. And I'm going to we're going to do two exercises. The idea is that maybe you should, that each of you should do one, right? But switch off whenever you feel like it, okay? So the way this works is that one person types. As they type, they explain to, the par to their partner what they are doing, okay? And the other person reviews every line that is typed. So the idea here is uh, that basically that the person who's not doing the typing Give some direction, right? They tell, they talk to their partner, basically saying, "What is the overall thing? What is the overall objective of what we're trying to do?" <laughs> Which isn't too hard in this case because our, our objectives are going to be clearly laid out, right? So normally, the so what normally would be what the observer would be doing with these small exercises that we're about to do, uh, you know, this is normally what the observer would do. So instead, what they're going to do this time is, you know, remind their partner what they're doing. Uh, you know, but also make sure that they, 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 you know, you know, aren't making mistakes or if you see a mistake, like, oh, you put a semicolon after the for loop, right? You don't want to do that, you know, or you missed a character here or you spelled it this way here and this way there. That's why you're getting an error. Basically, you're going to watch the other person code. Um, and it's, yeah, so the, using the, so the, the person, so this frees the person writing the code uh, to basically focus their, attention to basically the, the line by line stuff and 
the observer acts now as a safety net. Basically, allow they can rely on the observer to pa uh, to catch the er the errors quicker. Now, I did this basically all the time when I was working on my PhD work with uh, with one of my research partners, uh, and I was traditionally we didn't swap off nearly as much as we should uh, uh, as we did do. We uh, basically had different roles on the projects, but typically what would happen is that my friend would program because he was a much better programmer than me, a much faster programmer than me. Uh, but I would, but he was also very sloppy. Um, so I would be there and basically making sure he, everything he did made sense. And also basically doing the basic stuff because a lot of times we weren't working in an IDE. We were working in basic text editor. I was going, you misspelled that here. You capitalized this here. You didn't capitalize it here. You know, all that stuff that basically that he would have had to catch and just got, and gone through and run it and then gone through again and correct it. And, you know, basically we removed a lot of the issues that we had. Um, you know, so the idea here is that programmers bring different experiences to their, uh, to their task. So ideally, the best, what I would like to do is that if, you, if there are people who are more pro comfortable programming, okay, like if you've got, if you have prior programming experience, find someone else who doesn't have prior programming experience. Okay. Okay. Um, you never really, and I know you feel like you probably understand the stuff, but you never really understand the stuff as well as you think you did until you have to teach it. Um, the other thing is that basically people think different ways. Okay. So they can uh, just look at the problem in different ways. And finally, even if you do think in really similar ways, the third part is that because you have to take a different role, you will be forced to think in a different way. Okay, so this is a good tool. Let's see how this works out. So first, let's go ahead and find a person. You only need one laptop for this. Uh, so go ahead and find a partner to work with. So I'll give you a couple minutes to find somebody to work with. Uh, and this, again, this works in pairs. And if we have an odd number, we'll figure out what, what to do, okay? So just try to find somebody uh, that you need to work with. Feel free to move around the room. Okay. As far as submitting the work, you, so how will submitting the work uh, today go? Uh, also, first off, I should probably mention as an aside for the Japan students that they, uh, that for the Japan students, since you can't really find someone else to program, well, there's probably, there's two people in there. So do your best to get together and work on this uh, and submit the code when you, can, when, uh, when you see this lecture and, you know, do the exercises. Uh, now, that being said, for the rest of you, uh, I've created an assignment over here um, in, in not assignments, but in, um, it's under quizzes. It's just two, uh, two slash five in-class exercises. So you'll put your, uh, your, so you, one of you will upload the code there. Okay. And when the other one gets the chance, upload it there. Uh, other, but what you're going to want to do is in the code, in what, in what you submit today, put both your names and your and your emails in there, okay? You know, in the comments up on top of it. That, this is, again, I'm just trying to figure out the best way to make this one work. Um, there's probably a group function in here that I hadn't figured out yet, so I'll, I'll, I'll do some looking into that. Yes? There's nothing there. Yeah, that's, no, there's nothing there because we're gonna, they're up here on my laptop, so we're gonna do them one at a time, okay? 
So uh, the first thing, let's see. This one looked pretty good. So these, so first off, these problems that I'm grabbing, they are coming uh, from from uh, our textbooks web uh, web page, which is buildingjavaprograms.com. They have a lot of supplements here. So I've already uploaded all the slides here. Okay. Um, now they have a My Programming Lab link, which is what something you get that I don't use in this class. If you buy the textbook, you get an access code for it. I don't use it, but if you have it, you might use it. Um, otherwise, you've got the uh, it all, the access code on the on the new textbook. On new copies of the textbook also provide you video notes from the authors. Again, but otherwise they have practice practice it, which are you know stuff that that a bunch of exercises in the book have. And then all the slides are here, and then all these uh, problems that I'm showing you are here as well. So, all right. So your first uh, problem today is to write a program that basically outputs this, this block of characters on, in, on the center left. The one, three, 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 five, 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 bunch of sevens and the bunch of nines, right? Uh, there's tables here to help you figure that out if you need it. Um, sorry. The touch pad on here is a bit sensitive. Um, but that's your first objective, to recreate, to write a method that recreates this pattern, right? Doesn't need any parameters, does it? Since I'm just telling you to recreate this exact pattern, okay? So that's your first objective. Let's see how you can do in maybe 10, you know, 10, 15 minutes, okay? And if you need help, TA's here, I'm here, okay? Remember, constantly talk about what you're doing. We'll be going around and be making sure you work okay. A little bit of Python script. Okay, so I mean, a lot of the stuff, is, what we're just trying to do is build, as you, as you can see, what we build out is building the um, you know, finesse. Let me go ahead and stop the recording and I'll splice it together again later. That seems like a good idea. Okay, so for these kinds of problems where we've got a, uh, where we've got basically a line and each line changes, it's kind of, I, I don't just, you know, when we see these tables, they, they exist for a reason, right? You've got, and they help figure out like kind of the expression you need to figure out these problems. We need five dashes, right? And we have one number. Then we have four, then three, then we have three dashes. Then two, then one dashes, and then we have uh, two num. We have well, our numbers are three, then five numbers, then six number. Sorry, not six, seven, and then nine numbers. And you can download these files from uh, from the Building Java Programs website. Okay, so we need to figure out what how many dashes there are going to be per line. Okay. So let's see, we have uh, one times the number of lines. Let's see, times the line, let's see. We have, let's see, I'm mean, just, dashes expression. So we have five dashes here, right? On the first line, then four, then three, then two, then one. Right? So let's see, do they have, ne do they use negative one? Yeah, they use negative one. So whatever the line number is, okay, we subtract that from five, sorry, from six. Because you've got, we need five dashes here, then four, then three, then two, that one. That's not the expression I would have used, but that's how they like to do it. Over here, what about the number? What number are they using? They use, well, we've got one line, and then our numbers are three. And they've got two, sorry, one and one. Then they've got two and three. Line three has number five. Line four has number seven. Line five has number nine. That's two times negative one. And that gives you the number. So we can use this information to figure out what are, uh, how many dashes we need. 
So first things first, let's work on each on basically figuring on getting the right number of dashes. So rather than focusing on the whole problem at once, I'm just going to focus on five dashes, then four, then three, then two, then one. One, I, and let's go with uh, lines. It lines is equal to one. Lines is less than or equal to one. Lines plus plus. Let's go ahead and um, expand this. Okay. Now let's work on just getting the dashes. So four, and I know I don't know what's going to go in there yet. Let's go with and i is equal to one. And we know we need five. Let's go ahead and say there's going to be, you know, the first line we want to have five of them. It's five. I for plus. System dot out dot print line a dash. Print. And then we'll need a new line at the end. So here, right now, if I run this, I don't get anything too exciting because, of course, I've got to actually call it. So print prob 1. Okay. So we run this. And let's see. I'm not getting – oh, yeah. I'm not getting anything too exciting because I need to print there. So 5. And then I need 5 lines. So I need to switch five there. So now I've got five, five, and what I need is five, four, three, two, one, right? Because this line is going to print this. This is going to print the exact same th thing each time. It's not going to vary. So if I try subtracting the number of lines we have, because line starts at one, then it's two, then it's three, then it's four, then it's five, I end up with one fewer than I need, right? Right? I got four, then three, then two, then one. Well. Okay, then I go, okay, I could possibly add one to that. Oh, nope, we added one in the wrong direction. So maybe I need to add one over here. Five, four, three, two, one, right? And if we look over here on, on that, that's, that's the expression we have over here. They, it's just flipped. Okay, and then I realize, oh, wait, uh, I can copy-paste this over here because system.out.print um, I'm going to just put here as a placeholder for my number an exclamation point right and then I've got five on each side now I've got four on each side three on each side two on each side one on each side right because the this pattern is symmetrical right so now I've got one thing left in the middle, right? Notice how we basically have to don't focus on. So when we've got problems like this, don't focus on the whole thing. Focus it on piece by piece. Okay. So four. So now let's go ahead and four int num is equal to one. Num is less than. Uh, let's see. Well, we want. One num in the first line, so we'll just do less than or equal to one for right now, and then we'll figure it out later. Num plus plus. Okay. And then system dot out dot print line one. Sorry, num. Which is just gonna print out num right now for right now. Oh, what's going on here? I added in a print print line. I needed a print. Right? That's why it was breaking up like that. See, I made mistakes all the time too. Careless mistakes. The difference is, is that I've made these mistakes a lot so I know how to fix them. So the only way, um, you know, the only way you can really get to figure out how this stuff works is by failing a whole lot and and not, you know, succeeding. So let's go ahead and look at this. We've got one, then we've got a bunch of threes, then we've got five. So we've got one one three three five five seven seven and nine nines. So definitely printing out num seems to be the correct decision here. Okay. The question is, is that we start at one, but what do we need over here? So we want one on the first line. Oh, two on the second line. So that means it's related to to my lines variable, right? So anytime you see when you say I need 
x on the on the first line, x minus 2 on the second, sorry, x minus 1 on the second, x minus 2, or I need x, then I need x plus 1 on the, on the second line, x plus 2 on the third line. Basically, every time where you basically, what you have changes based on the line, you need to use the lines variable, the outer loops variable to control stuff. Does that make sense to everybody? So, lines. So let's see what we, what we do if we do lines uh, plus num. Let's see what happens, right? What do we get? Um, don't get much of anything, in fact. Oh, because it's infinite loop, so because lines nums keeps increasing. So i is less than or equal to lines. Let's see what happens there. We got one, two, one, two, three. So we don't want to change uh, nums too much. Instead, what we want to possibly print out is lines over here. So ones, twos, threes, fours, fives. So we've got one, one, two, two, three, threes, four, fours, five, fives. Right? Now, if we go back to our original uh, thing, it says the expression we figured out was two times the number times the line minus one. So how many things do we want to print out? Two times the number of lines minus one, right? Because on the first line, we'll want two lines minus one, which is one. On the second line, we'll want four minus one, which is two. Sorry, which is uh, three. So of course, this is still going. So we've got one, twos, threes, fours, fives. So we'll just copy paste it in. And there we go, right? So by figuring out this, so when I give you guys a table like this, it's kind of a hint that it might help. So, um, so I mean, we're yeah, we're programmers and stuff, but this is not your greatest tool, and it's kind of a, and I kind of set you up for failure by implying that it was. This over here is your greatest tool, pencil and paper, or pen and paper as it is. So let's go ahead and use the remaining time we have in class to work on another problem. Don't worry if you didn't solve this one, by the way. This is, again, if it's under the quiz, if it's under the quiz tab, then it's partic participation-based. So all I need you to do is just turn in what you got. So again, don't worry about it uh, if, you couldn't get, if you couldn't get it through. This is all about get, uh, you know, doing some exercises. So let's go ahead and um, look at, and again, go through these. These are pretty nice. But I like this problem. Uh, print grid. So let's go ahead and we're going to write a method this time. It's going to be a method called print, uh, print grid and it accepts two integers that represent the number of rows and columns and prints the number of integers from one to rows times columns in column major order. So for example, we want uh, four rows and six columns. Okay? Four rows and six columns. Okay? So, so the output is four rows and six columns. Now those numbers look random and stuff. Uh, but we've got 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17. So all the numbers from four, from 1 to 4 times 6 are in this column. So again, you will need a nested for loop. You'll, uh, you'll need only one nested for loop this time. Okay? Because each of these are... so you, And what you need to do is just figure out the appropriate number you need for each of these squares. Okay? Now, notice that basically that you'll have to figure out basically each row at a time, right? Because we can only print horizontally, right? So you'll want to print 1, 5, 9, 13, 17, 21. So how do I figure that out? Well, first thing you need to think about is what is the relationship? How do I, how are we counting the numbers? And is that at all related to any of the numbers I passed in as an input? How many numbers are there? And is that related to the number of, uh, the number I passed in as an input. So figure out the first line and then work on, on it from there. All right, so that's your pr remaining problem for this, uh, for this um, uh, class. So um, go ahead and get started on it. Um, now this time though, I, you, whoever's been typing, whoever was typing, uh, it's your turn to be the observer and whoever was observing, it's your turn to be the typer. So you can switch computers and your laptop over.
but you don't want to enter your laptop over that perfectly fine just in case you know work on a different computer. Okay, I'll be right there in a second. Okay. Uh, the last thing I need to mention, I'm putting this in the recording as well, is that there will be a time lab on Friday, which means that basically you will be getting uh, some problems on on. So you'll be getting some problems on Friday, essentially, and you'll have about an hour to complete them. Okay, so about half the lab period will be dedicated for you working on like maybe a couple of problems. These problems should be in the area of difficulty of maybe the first couple of problems on your actual home. So the last, so if you're thinking about the assignment I just gave out, it's not the problems towards the end that I'm expecting to solve, but more the problems towards the beginning, like the 99 bottles of beer on the wall problem, or the square of sums problem. So problems like that are about the difficulty you might expect. Um, you'll get an hour to complete them. Uh, because this is my first time doing it at the time lab as well, uh, don't stress out about it because if everybody does terribly, of course, or, or like the class does, like, oh, wow, they all got an average of 70s. Obviously, I'll have to adjust the score. So, you know, it's like, um, we'll figure, so we'll figure that out since, you know, this is, main, this is mainly meant to be a low stakes examination before our first exam. Yes. And we'll give you a shorter homework assignment on Friday because practice makes perfect here. The only way, the only way you're going to succeed in this class is by practicing a whole lot. So now, let's go ahead and stop the recording.